Let's take a look at this Novice Jumpers course. It's an AKC course designed by Janet Gaunt. It's from uh, January of 2010. So right off the bat, first thing I'd like to do is line my dog up so that they see these first two obstacles in a line if possible. And now you can see that there is going to be a turn from two to three. So this is the first turn that your dog is going to make. After that, they've got a very nice gentle curve into the tunnel here. Once they exit the tunnel, you can see that there's a potential off-course trap right here, back jumping two. So your dog's got to make sure that they come this way, nine, ten, and there's going to be another side change in here. So if we take a look at this, You can see that depending on where your dog lands after 9, they will not be able to see the weave pulls in their line of sight. This is important because it gives you an idea of whether you need to do your rear cross uh, before or after jump number 10. If you can see it in a nice straight line, so let's say in theory your dog could, could do that, you would want to rear cross over here on the landing side of 10, but since you are creating a turn at 10, let's take a look at that more clearly. So as your dog comes from 8 to 9, they probably land about there. They can land about here, and you can see that they need to turn uh, to 11. So because there is a turn taking place at jump number 10, it is going to be a little bit better for your dog. You'll get a better turn if you rear cross before jump number 10. Of course this makes the entry uh, possibly a little bit more difficult for your dog depending on how you've trained your weave pulls, uh, but this is something that I will try with my dog. Once they finish the weaves and get into this tunnel, you see they've got another um, side change somewhere in here to finish out the course. This is me and my border collie, a young border collie, two-year-old named Miria. She's running a novice jumpers course designed by uh, Janet Gaunt. Miria has not yet competed in any agility trials. So first, let's go ahead and take a look at this run at regular speed. See a rear cross here into the weave poles. Sweet. Front cross and finishing out Yay. very nice 15 obstacle novice course. When I'm getting ready to debut a dog in novice, there's only a couple of things that I'm really worried about. Now there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Your dog might run by jumps. They may refuse new and scary looking strange things like a panel jump that they've never seen before. Um, they may struggle with something like a tire that doesn't look familiar to them. Um, and aside from the knock bars, there's always the missed weave pull entries that people will often stress about, especially if you've kind of taught the weaves as the last prerequisite before entering your dog in an actual trial. But really, I only have two concerns, and these are two things that I encourage uh, everyone to really focus on. One is that you and your dog have a really great experience. Um, you want them to really love agility, whether they're knocking a couple bars, getting a couple of refusals. You don't want to get on your dog, meaning you don't want to provide any kind of uh, uh, negativity surrounding the run, no matter what they do. So the most important thing, have a good, fun run, good experience for your dog. Number two, and I think is also very, very important, is make sure that your dog is a very good start line before you go there. That is the one thing that is... Uh, pretty difficult to fix depending on the extent of the problem, but this is something that I think is very much controllable and a behavior that's much easier to generalize than something like weave poles, jumps, uh, things that could be very equipment dependent. So you can see one of the things I do right off the bat is try and fake my dog out here and you see she doesn't fall for it at all so we've been working hard on our start lines. I do a couple more fakes as I lead out that's why she's on the start line such a such a long time. And you see right here she gives a little jolt so if you take a look you see her kinda jolt 
Uh, for my own criteria, that's okay, as long as she doesn't step a paw out of place. So if she had moved one of her paws, uh, you know, a couple inches forward or something, taken a step or moved her back leg, that would, would have been a failure to meet the criteria, and I would have come back and we'd have done that again. So you want to have very good start lines. Alright, so now we're into the course, and what I'm going to do is try and create a turn from one, let's see, we've got one, two, and three. So this is the turn from two to three, and I'm going to do it with a front cross. Um, buried inside of a lead-out pivot. So basically I lead out and I'm going to do a stationary front cross. That's all the lead-out pivot really is. You can see that my dog is in the air, meaning the dog is committed to a line. So the dog is going to zoom forward and it looks like the dog is going to go in extension. And actually I need the dog to be turning here on a slice. And you can see from my body position that I've not yet started the front cross. I'm still kind of facing off this way and so I'm going to send the dog basically in the wrong direction in extension and even though you freeze it with the dog right over the jump you can see that I'm uh, I've started the front cross by now it's too late the dogs in the air she cannot change her path so this is going to be a very late front cross on the handlers part and it's going to create a wide turn so you can see as soon as the dog can which is landing uh, after landing she turns comes around and then I'm able to get her over this jump so that's a little bit of handler error there. So we've got her on the curve, nice curve into the tunnel. And I'm going to stay with her a little bit. And because I stay with her a little bit to make sure she takes this purple jump instead of bypassing that purple jump as you try and race ahead to do a front cross, because I stay with her and she's pretty fast and I'm not as fast, I'm going to opt for a rear cross here before the weave pulls. So I'm going to move behind her. You see we take a bar here, and again, a bar is just not something that I'm really concerned about uh, at this point in her career. It's not something that I would stop a, a run over. So you see she gets the rear cross there. Gets her weave pole entry. Very nice. Into the tunnel, and here I'm going to do another side change. Here I'm going to use the front cross. And I want to move across uh, the face of this jump between these two obstacles as cleanly and quickly as I can. So we got a left step, a right step, a left step, and the right step is forward. And this way I can get out of her way, give her a clear path to the jump. And we finish out with a turn here. And I've got a toy on me that I release and throw out ahead of her.